Alright guys, this is section 1.2 surrounding line segments and distance. Alright, so where we were last section 1.1, we talked about the basics of geometry points, lines, and planes, um, and we named and defined them. Um, we're going to build upon that knowledge, and we're going to talk a little bit more about uh, properties of lines here, specifically what happens when we cap the line off at endpoints. Um, and we'll, we'll be measuring them, uh, finding the distances, and solving other sorts of problems like that. Uh, so to start this section, uh, we discuss line segments, just a segment of a line. All right. Um, so unlike a line, a line segment can be measured, all right, because it has two endpoints. Those endpoints are used to name uh, the segment here. All right. So if you look here at this uh, segment here. It's bound by the endpoints A, B, A, and B. Um, so there's a couple different ways we can name it. All right, we can name it as segment A, B, or we can name it as segment B, A. All right, unlike a line, remember a line continues in both directions without bound. Uh, this is bound by the endpoints A and B. So with line segments, you know, we can measure them. We can take a ruler. We can measure them uh, in inches, centimeters, miles, kilometers, whatever uh, method we choose. Um, but the next part of this section talks about the segment addition postulate. All right. In your book, it actually is called the betweenness of points postulate. Uh, I don't like that uh, description of it at all. Uh, I'm more familiar with the segment addition postulate, which is what I'm going to teach you guys. Uh, segment addition postulate comes up in chapter two when we talk about theorems a little bit more. Remember, uh, a postulate, if you're studying your vocab on Quizlet, uh, a postulate is a term or a, a statement that's accepted to be true without justification or without proof. Um, so without further ado, the segment addition postulate in its glory is as such. If points A, B, and C are collinear, then point B is between A and C, if and only if uh, A, B plus B, C equals A, C. So in a diagram here, you can see A, B, the segment A, B, the segment B, C. If you add their two measures together, you'll get the length of the whole. Notice I'm not using the line symbol above a, B, B, C, or A, C, like I did up here. That's because we're denoting measurement. All right, we're denoting the measure of the segment. When we're talking about the segment, uh, just as a geometric figure, we have to include the line bar over top of it. When we're talking about its measure, you do not, do not, do not need that. I don't know how many students uh, over the last few years that I've been teaching geometry have continually messed that up, even. Uh, into the fourth quarter of the year. All right, so let's uh, talk about the segment addition postulate a little bit uh, in terms of uh, a few examples here. First example here, we're going to find the length of BC. All right, so by the segment addition postulate, AB plus BC equals AC. The length of AB is two and three quarter inches. If you want to convert that to 2.75, that's okay. I'll accept that. BC, we don't know what the length of BC is, so we're gonna leave it blank. Equals the whole length of AC, which is six inches. All right, this is no more than a one-step equation. Uh, 2.75 plus X equals six. We're looking now to solve for BC. And to solve for BC, you'll subtract 2.75 from each side of the equation, and you'll get 3.25. And our units are inches. Now, if the unit isn't given in the problem, we're going to write units. So if no units are given
simply write even number. Sim just simply write units. All right. Second example here. Find the value of x, s, t, and t, u. If t is between s and u, s, t equals 7, 7x, t, u is 5x minus 3, and s, u is 45 units. So we'll start by writing the segment addition postulate. s, t plus t, u equals s, u. s, t is 7x units. t, u is 5x minus 3 units, and SU is given in the problem to be 45 units. This now is an equation. 7x plus 5x is 12x. And solve this equation. Add 3 to both sides, you get 12x equals 48, and divide by 12, and you'll get x to be 4. Then the last part of this problem, find ST and TU. All right. ST is 7 times X. X is 4. So 7 times 4 is 28 units. And then TU is 5X minus 3 x again is 4 minus 3 is 20 minus 3 which is 17 units all right so that's our exploration of the segment addition postulate let's talk a little bit more about distance uh, distances uh, on a number line and on a coordinate plane. All right. Uh, before we talk about distance, uh, we need to talk a little bit about congruency. Two segments are congruent if they have the same measure. Uh, the symbol for congruence is an equality symbol with a little curved line up top. Slashes on any segment indicate congruence here. So in this diagram here, we have line AC here. We have two slash, a slash between points A and B and a slash between points B and C. So that tells us that segment AB is congruent to segment BC. All right. Ironically enough, it also tells us that point B is the midpoint of AC, but that's the next section. We'll get into that in uh, another video. The distance uh, between two points is the length of the segment between those two points at their endpoints, and that's what can be measured in terms of inches or feet um, or centimeters or meters or whatever the case may be. All right, on a number line, uh, the distance formula uh, between two points on a number line is the absolute value of the difference of their coordinates. Uh, so if point P has coordinate x1 and Q has coordinate x2, then the length of PQ is the absolute value of uh, the two, the difference of the two coordinates. Uh, and you could either subtract x1 from x2 and take the absolute value, or you can subtract x2 from x1 and take their absolute value. So a couple of examples here. Number three, we're gonna find the length of BD. All right. All right, so I'm gonna start with point D, that's at negative one. Remember, open up the absolute value bar. And remember, it's the difference, so we're gonna subtract uh, the coordinate of B, which is negative seven. Negative one minus negative seven is negative one plus seven. Negative one plus seven is six. Absolute value of six is six units. Remember, if you, you take the absolute value of anything, you're just gonna get the distance it is away from the origin, all right? And you could even check this if you really want to. You could check if we move over 
go from B and see how many units it is to D, we can go from B 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 units. And that's a quick check for that. All right. Second example here, we're going to find the length of CF. Here's another color here. Start open up your absolute values bar. And we'll, we'll take the coordinate of F first. That's going to be 3. We're going to subtract the coordinate of C, which is negative 4. 3 minus a negative 4 is 3 plus 4. Remember, a double negative make, turns to a positive. 3 plus 4 is 7. Absolute value of 7 is 7 units. All right. Now, if we did it uh, the other way and took and subtracted uh, the other way, you'll get the same thing. All right, if we took the coordinate of C first, which is negative four, and subtracted the coordinate of F, which was three, negative four minus three is negative seven. The absolute value of negative seven is seven, and it's still seven units no matter what. Okay, so you could do it either way. Um, doesn't much matter whichever preference you choose. And then the last uh, topic of the section uh, talks about the distance formula on a coordinate plane. All right, this uh, distance formula is derived from uh, the Pythagorean theorem, which we'll talk about in chapter eight, which talks about right triangles and trigonometry. All right, so. If point P has coordinates x1, y1, and Q has coordinates x2, y2, then the distance from point P to point Q is given by this formula here. Uh, basically, take the difference, square the differences, square the difference of the x's, and add it, and add the different, the, the square of the differences of the y's, and take the square root of all of it. Um, so that's that's the distance formula here. As long as you know to substitute points in, you're going to be perfectly fine. All right. Another thing here, which I'm going to tell talk about in the next example here. Uh, if you start with y2, like this, the y part of the second or the x part of the second uh, coordinate, you have to go to go x2 minus x1. You have to do y2 minus y1. If you do x1 minus x2, you have to do y1 minus y2, uh, or else it will, the whole solution will go awry. All right, so let's find the distance between points C and D here. All right. So remember the formula, x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared and take the square root of all of it. All right, so I'm going to look at this, uh, these two points here. Uh, it doesn't matter which one you make x1, y1 or x2, y2. I'm just going to go in order, all right, just to make it a little clearer. And what we'll do is we'll substitute in x2 is 3, so we got 3 minus the x1, uh, the x coordinate of c, which is a negative 1. And then we'll do the same thing with the y's. y2 in our case is negative 5, and we'll subtract the value of 3 from it. Remember, those differences are all squared, and you take the sum and then take the square root of it. And now we'll do a little bit of math and algebra here to get the rest of it. 3 minus negative 1, that's going to turn into a 4, because 3, the double negative here, turns into a positive. I didn't want to do that. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Got to get the... Uh, pen back open. You got a square 4 there, and then negative 5 minus 3 is negative 8 squared. 
4 squared is 16, negative 8 squared is 64. Sixteen plus sixty-four is eighty. The square root of eighty. Remember from our algebra review, basic algebra review. Uh, that's not in simplest terms, nor do we want it in uh, a calculator format. Though I will give you the decimal approximation. Uh, the square root of eighty is going to be simplified. The square root of sixteen times the square root of five. The square root of 16 is 4 times the square root of 5. And then in your calculator, if you plug that in, 4 times the square root of 5 or the square root of 80, you will get that uh, to be about uh, 8.9 units. Now the value that I'm going to look for over any other uh, in this course, I'm going to look for the approximate, or the uh, not the approximate, the exact value. Um, this is more tangible, the 8.9, that's more tangible, you can relate to that. Uh, however, this is the answer that I would be looking for. The reason being... Uh, when you get into the trig part of Algebra 2, trig, or if you're in a trig class in the future, you're going to be dealing with uh, exact numbers, uh, especially if you go into calculus uh, or advanced math in college. You're going to be dealing with exact units, not approximate units. So it's nice to get into that trend early and uh, go and do it that way instead. All right. So that's all there is to this section um, there's a couple problems here that I want you guys to do after you finish this um, it is on page 20 you're gonna complete numbers 1 through 9 all of them and they are not at all terribly bad you can do them uh, you could probably get them done within 10 to 15 minutes uh, which keeps you around 30 35 minutes for this whole, this whole assignment uh, after you watch this video and everything. All right. Thanks. If you have any questions, uh, bring them to class tomorrow and uh, we'll discuss them. Uh, we'll do some more problems in class from the book. Um, thanks for watching. See you guys tomorrow.